one-on-one -on -one shadow boxing. Today my fellow shadow boxer, Teresa von Lischhold. Teresa, a short uh, introduction of your background. You uh, want to be politician because you've never been elected for the parliament or state or the federal, but you want to be a politician. So how long you are pursuing your dream of being a politician? Quite a few years now. The first election I contested was about 2003, I think. 2003. So it's more than 10 years. You are running after your tail and want to be a politician. <laughs> All this time so, I've been teaching in the classroom. Yes. So, so you are originally a teacher. I have been teaching for 17 years. I'm still registered to teach. Yes. I've been teaching in Western Australia since 1996. So why do you want to leave your pupils and why want to go into politics? Well. I'm fairly disgusted by the politicians in our nation. I fight for the people's rights. I'm very honest and open. I talk about all sorts of issues. I tried with a few other parties. Um, first of all, with the Liberal Party, I was disgusted at the corruption and the dishonesty, and I just thought, no, this is no good. Mm -hmm. uh, so you I wanted to be a Liberal Palmer. first? Wanted to be a Liberal first? Well, most then... political people go for Liberal or Labor. Yes. Because they say they're the only two parties for success. But what I've found is they've been dominating the parliament since the Second World War for 65 years in Australia. Mm -hmm. And the corruption has built up and up and up over the years. A lot of the stuff I talk about is not just the past few years, but we're no. going... No, I understand, Teresa. So you dropped the idea to being a liberal politician. You don't want to look at Labour. So what was your next step? Well, I got endorsed by Clive Palmer. And then that didn't last, well, two weeks because I wouldn't tow the party line. Yes. Um, so you've been kicked out by Mr Palmer? <laughs> yeah, well then I contested the federal election with the Australian Protectionist Party. And um, I'm still with them, but... Um, that was last year. Yes, that was the federal election. I was one of the 11 candidates of the Fremantle Federal Electorate. So I'm not for the Senate. No, but I'm contesting the Senate 2016. Okay, so that's well, your point. It doesn't really political... matter what party I'm with. It, Why not? Why is not it matter? Well, that's part of the problem with Australian politics is the party is irrelevant. They can't hide behind the party. It's the politician. It's the person in the position. And that's the person that's accountable for everything. They are accountable for everything, but they take responsibility for nothing. So it doesn't matter what party you're with. It's, it's the person. What is your vision? What are your priorities? What are your qualities? What are your morals like? What What's your... Um, do you have integrity? Are you honest? They can hide behind their party, but they can't get away with what they do, the corruption, in the end, because it is the person that is accountable. And the other issue is that Australians must change the way they vote. They must change the what way they mean? vote. What do you mean by that? Well, Teresa? you're going to keep voting for Liberal, keep voting for Labor, keep voting for the Greens. The three parties, particularly the two parties, Liberal and Labor, dominate federal and state parliaments in Australia since the Second World War. And we've got record levels of homelessness. They're destroying the education system. They're destroying the economy. Look at all the manufacturing. Look at the agriculture. Look at... They've destroyed everything. Now, Australians are going to continue to vote for the same corrupt people. They're going to vote, number one, other candidates. Number one, another political party or an independent candidate will vote, number one, someone else and put Liberal, Labor and Greens last, second, last and third, last and get rid of them. We have to get rid of them. Thousands of Australians have died in our nation because of them. Because what do you mean of direct, by that? well, direct government action. Look at the homelessness in 2012. The figure was 105,000 Australians. Or more. It all comes down to money. The way they think. How can we extort money out of Australians? Even even the, the corrupt mayor of Perth, she finds homeless people $100. She thinks that's a legitimate way or, or some, some sort of appropriate way to treat people who've got nowhere to live and no money and she does it, to, they do it to get rid of the homeless people so the public can't see them. Then they use the police to get rid of the homeless people, lock them up, drug them, or put them in jail, or put them in psychiatric facilities. They are killing people in psychiatric facilities. I have called for two years for a Royal Commission, a Commonwealth Royal Commission to prove it. Now, I'm not someone who's just walked off the street and uh, making these allegations. Enormous amount of research. Look at the evidence. People know that it's going on. They are poisoning people all over the world with those drugs. 
And they've been doing it for decades, locking people up, forcibly locking people up, drugging them to death, drugging them in the community, drugging them, drugging children. They want to sterilise children in Western Australia, take them off their parents for 14 days and lock them up in drugging. It's disgusting. Then you've got the prevalence of suicide in Australia at the research, preliminary research I've done about the last four decades. It's about 80 to 90,000 Australians have killed themselves in suicide. And how many are dying on the roads? The death to, road death toll, interestingly for Western Australia, the 2012-13 figure is 187 in Western Australia. And the psychiatric death figure resulting from psychiatric practice in Western Australia is 245. Now that's so been, that's much higher than the is, road. They yeah. are killing more people through psychiatry than the, that die on the roads. That's just the West Australian figure. They've also jailing record levels of Australians for money to extract money, government-imposed economic fees and fines. In Western Australia, the jails are full, not of murderers and rapists and pedophiles, but they are full of poor people, poor Australians, and they've been jailing them for years for money. The how Aboriginal the, people they've many, been jailing for many, years. It's too much. Of, how many of the people get into jail in the past year or so for economic fines not paid. Well, just in Western Australia, between 2008 and 2013, they jailed 5,017 Western Australians exclusively for government-imposed economic fees and fines for, for, for money. Plus, an additional 13,000 Western Australians they jailed for money on top of other so-called offences. So rather than create jobs for these people, rather than make it easy for people to drive, make it easy for people to find accommodation. They are just jailing the poor people. This so is I'll Colin Barnett, Michael Mission, Mark McGowan as well, because I don't care, Labor, Liberal, and all the Labor politicians have been doing all it. All Greens. Well, Greens as well, they're poison. You know, they've been doing this before Liberal came before the last election. Labor politicians were jailing West Australians and Australians for, for money. In um, New South, let's look at the other states, New South Wales, they have just cancelled 300,000 licences, driving licences in New South Wales. 300,000 of them? Be because of government imposed economic fees and fines. The government is doing it. So how do they think that's effective ma management of the economy? They... Or life. Or well, no respect for human life, their own people. Then they bring in foreigners to work to give jobs, 457 visas, when Australians don't have jobs. Rather than create jobs, like I said, they're jailing the Australians for money, which is a waste of tax money as well as a human rights abuse because they can't get a job, they turn to drugs, they turn to crime. It's a self-perpetuating black hole and it costs more for the taxpayer to incarcerate people, about $100,000 of tax money, to incarcerate a single... Oh, yeah. For a year, a single Australian. So what is the biggest problem? We don't have a Bill of Rights for our people. What the Bill of Rights is for the audience who don't know anything about it and why we don't have it? Every nation in the Western world has a Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. And Australia is the only nation in the Western world without a Bill of Rights. So the Bill of Rights is a set of rights that you give to your own people to empower them to have more freedom and rights and empower them politically and economically. For example, the, uh, freedom of speech is often a bill of rights, freedom of religion, freedom um, to trial by jury, freedom, uh, status of citizenship, protection for that. Property rights is often put in a bill of rights, which Australia desperately needs. Homeowners desperately need property rights because the government just <coughs> destroys property rights in Australia. So a series of rights, fundamental rights and freedoms, protections and guarantees that um, we as a nation would believe are fundamental to all Australian citizens. And important. Fundamental yeah. and important and uh, critical to basic living and well-being and um, even the right to housing, a right to a home, a right to a job, a right to, you know, um, it's about freedom really. It's, it's to stop government incursion unnecessary incursion into people's lives or so brutality. why don't we have that? During the 1980s and 90s, the judges in the Supreme Courts around Australia and the High Court were really trying to pave a way for a Bill of Rights with certain cases like um, the Lane case, 1996, and, and other um, important free speech and 
political speech and communication cases where they were really pushing, trying to pave a way for a judicially constructed Bill of Rights. And they did a lot of good work, the judges in the 1980s and 90s, and the lawyers and the teachers in that time to try and pave a way. But the politicians keep blocking it all the time. What do you mean absolutely by that? absolutely that the politicians what, what in our nation... What do you mean nation, by that? How, they, how the politicians can block these things? Well, they, it's, they create legislation. They create yes. le legislation. So it's up to them to create a Bill of Rights legislation to, for the people of Australia. And they but won't. they're not doing it. No, in fact, in 2000... And a reason for that, you think? Well, because they're corrupt. They don't Have want they to seen... share their power. The Bill of Rights is beneficial to especially Australians who are suffering, the homeless people, the people who have no rights when they're just thrown in jail for money and, and that sort of thing. That, that, a Bill of Rights really provides some protections and guarantees for people like that, the people that need it the most. Now, the politicians don't care about those people. They don't care about us. And where they're forced to um, say, we want a Bill of Rights, and they, they won't introduce one because it maintains their own power and control. And they may argue that it undermines the democratic process. Where you go to uh, vote <laughs> in an election for certain candidates, and that's the that's the representation. Now, under the constitution, they're pro they're supposed to provide representative and responsible government, but they don't do that. Yes. How they're providing representative and responsible government when we've got so many homeless people and they're destroying the education system and destroying the economy? But it's so not we have happening. To fight. We have not... to fight to get rid of them. We yeah, have to I, under them out I understand and that. Out I understand. And to get new people. To who Teresa, the new people don't want to have Bill of Rights. The politicians, who we got the right to elect freely, <laughs> they're not keeping that as an important thing and they're not focused on Bill of Rights. They're focusing on other rights, the rights for equal marriage, the, the rights of the sharks to eat people. Yeah. They're all up to some very important things in Parliament, but Bill of Rights is not coming into that equation. So that's well, all I can way. say Another, is that I yes. have advocated for many years for a Bill of Rights. As a teacher, I have. As a published writer, I, I wrote, I've written sections about it in books that I've written about the Bill of Rights. I wrote a big section, a huge section about the Bill of Rights and the submission of five of the Supreme Court. I've talked about it on YouTube, the necessity for a Bill of Rights. I understand that. So there's lots that. of times when I, when I have mentioned it. So, you know what so my problem is with Bill of Rights? Political candidates who are doing it. If, when I look at the countries in Europe who all got Bill of Rights, or the United States of America, yeah. they're not really working for their people. That's so true. having a Bill of Rights and abusing the Bill of Rights, what they introduced for their people, is just as useless as not having a Bill of Rights. Yeah. So my problem is again, as yours, probably, uh, go it's back to the enough. basic, it's not enough, it's not even the beginning. I agree, absolutely, and there are commentators in legal texts who've said the same thing, that on its own a Bill of Rights is not enough. And I agree with you that we need more like a citizen's um, initiated referenda, CIR, where, like national plebiscites, where the voters... We need direct democracy and direct, active and yes. active democracy. I agree. On that note, Teresa, we have to go for a short break, but please okay. stay with us because we're coming back after this break and continuing our discussion about freedom and human rights with Teresa. <laughs> Plans, we have some exciting new furniture for your corporate office. Trendy XT series executive desks, new additions to complete industry lane, functional partition screens, and fantastic reception counter solutions. Remember, it's McLaren's for choice, quality, and premium value. Why shop around? Avoid the hassle and choose from over 4,000 new and pre-owned vehicles in one location at John Hughes, just over the causeway in Shepherd and Road, Victoria Park. John Hughes, your car buying destination. All aboard the 15-day Great Java Rail Tour through exotic Java. Discover some of the most spectacular tropical scenery in Asia while you travel in private luxury carriages and sleep in first-class hotels. Phone for a free brochure today. When I was young, filmmaking was just a dream. That dream became my passion. So I got the best training I could find. Cut. 
now that training's given me a brilliant career. All stories have a journey. Begin yours at the WA Screen Academy. You never really quite know where you're going to end up. You have an idea in your head. Sometimes the end result is quite close to what you had intended and other times it's totally different. You really don't plan the, the, the big things that happen in your life, I don't think. They just happen serendipity. Welcome back to One Much Other Boxing. We're going to continue our discussion of human rights in Australia and Western Australia with Teresa. Teresa, you think we got a problem with human rights in Australia and Western Australia? So, for example, yes. there was a recommendation made in 2009 in the Human Rights Consultation Report that Australia adopt the National Human Rights Act were not implemented, so the politicians the committee said, let's have a Human Rights Act for Australia, but the politician, no, no, no. Instead, the Commonwealth enacted the Human Rights Parliamentary Scrutiny Act of 2011, which is a Commonwealth law. Yes, and what does it say? Uh, creates a parliamentary joint committee on human rights containing requirement for a statement of compatibility. So every state politician in Australia and federal politician, every time they introduce a new bill, they are required under the Human Rights Parliamentary Scrutiny Act of 2011, which is a Commonwealth law, yes. and under Commonwealth Law Section 109 of the Constitution, Commonwealth Law overrides state law. So every state politician, every federal politician, every time they introduce a new bill, they must make a statement of compatibility with Commonwealth human rights legislation. And they don't. So, for example, with the car clamping in Western Australia, Michael Mission... Colin Barnett bringing this law. The Attorney General is supposed to make a statement of compatibility and say, is this compatible with Commonwealth um, human rights legislation in Australia? And they don't, because they don't care about it. And those bills, all new bills and legislative instruments are required to make this statement of compatibility. Does it comply with human rights legislation, yes or no? They're supposed to give an account to the Parliament. They don't do that. And part of the problem in Australia is the magistrates and the judges in Australia are yes. not upholding human rights legislation for Australian citizens. Do they, they, they need to do that? They have home? to do it because there's too much death. They are working for the government and they're working for the corporate sector. And even the head of the Supreme Court, uh, Wayne Martin, has made that public. He's said that that's been reported in the West Australian paper, which is a conservative newspaper, and they've said... He said that it's really the judiciary is really only available to rich people and a small group of people who are entitled to legal aid, not the majority of Australians. So the magistrates and the judges um, are not are not upholding rights of laws for the rights of Australians. They are selective in the laws that they enforce, and they enforce the laws the government wants them to enforce, or the politicians wants to enforce. But they mean to be independent from the politicians they are meant and from to be, the government. Well, but if the government them. paying their wage which we're giving them the money to pay the wage. They're still right. following the government instructions That's and not right. the people's needs. It's always the same people controlling the parliaments in Australia, the same people controlling, the same magistrates and judges controlling the judiciary. And it's become corrupt. For 65 years since the Second World War they've been doing this, they've been getting away with, with murder. I'm sorry if that offends people, but the evidence is, I've called for a Royal Commission, I can prove it. I can easily prove, it's not even going to be hard to prove, and yet they will, you go into a court, even educated people like me, they know who I am, they know I'm a teacher, they know I've written books, and I present a brilliant 77 page submission to the Supreme Court, what did the judge do? He lied through his teeth, and I caught them out in their corruption because they gave a political signage injunction to the Liberal politicians and candidates, in the state election of 2013. Yes. And then they tried to prosecute me for the same issue, political signage on my front fence. They put me through hell. <laughs> they made it six versus one Sorry. against me. And my commission intervened, the Liberal Attorney General, wasting millions of dollars of tax money trying to destroy my rights in the Supreme Court, when his party got a political signage injunction from Wayne Martin, the head of the Supreme Court, and a second judge, Kenneth Martin. 
When they walked in there, the Liberal, Poli the Liberal Party got political signage injunction uh, overnight, on the spot, from the Chief Justice, and then another one a few weeks later in January, like that. And the first one they got was the day before Christmas. Nice Christmas present. Let's go it's into some, some, some personal experience of yours. So, you don't like politicians, you don't like the government, you hate them so much because they're corrupt, you say. You hate them so much you don't want to pay the taxes, you don't want to pay money for them uh, on different penalties, which you should or they think you must. Let's look at how this started. This started from parking fees. A few dollars in parking fees. Now, the truth of the matter is, I was buying parking tickets I bought hundreds of parking tickets. I was doing my Master of Education in Notre Dame. Fremantle is shocking for parking in terms of they're just extorting money, revenue yeah. raising. The councils across the nation are doing it. They don't care about the impact on you. I was buying parking tickets. It doesn't matter how many parking tickets you buy, they still find a way to find you because they're ruthless. They're doing this to thousands of people. The evidence is 715,000 fines in Western Australia Hundreds of thousands of Australians won't pay, not just me. So this affects hundreds of thousands of Australians. Now, so it's like one year, okay, $650 worth of fines, probably like most other people out there, and um, I paid it all off. Okay. So you paid the parking fees. What's I did, happened I paid $650 so worth of parking fees So how do you accumulate now 7,000 plus Well, the fees. next year, the following year, it happened again. I was buying parking tickets and they still find a way to find you. And I thought, this is ridiculous. This, is, this, is, this cannot go on. I'm not going to keep forking out money for nothing to them because they're just ruthlessly doing it. So I thought, that's it. I've had enough. Well, you so, accumulated 7,000 plus fees. No, I didn't accumulate that much at so all. So how, how it's does based it based on about on the, yes. 15 parking fines or something like that over, over the course of a few years, which I've refused to pay. They start, they find you $50, then they double it to $100, mm -hmm. and then they add a, um, some enforcement fee on $25. So it becomes a parking, from a parking ticket of a few dollars to $125, and then of course you, you get, you know, maybe a dozen of those, and the next thing it's up to $7,900. So what they did, based on that, they destroyed my license, my car driving license, they destroyed my bus license, mm -hmm. they destroyed my car registration, they put an economic amount over my home now for $7,900. That's the sheriff's office. There was no court hearing for me to give my side of the story. Yeah. No, there's never been a court hearing to give my side of the story until after they clamped my car and I cut it off. I made a YouTube video and I put it on YouTube for the public's information. I wanted the public to know what the government was doing to me. Yeah. Now, the clamping has happened. You cut the clamp cut off. The clamp. Then the sheriff reported that thing to the police. And the police, no, I don't the, know if they did. Someone in the public or someone in the government, who knows? Someone in Somebody reported it and the police, the police started an investigation. So the, the police, police come to my come home. To your this home phony go, yes. so called search warrant that's yes. got the line blacked out, it, the, the police officer in charge, seven officers, six men and one woman, he lied to me about his name, said his name Vic or Victor. You know, I was in shock. I, I was trying to see how many police officers, oh my God, how many of you are there? Well, now, your problems are, one is the blacked-out document. Blacked out. Why is it blacked out? What did they say to you well, when the they reason, asked them? The reasoning they give to me, to me is that they say they don't protect the magistrates and the judges. What do you mean protect the magistrates <laughs> and the judges? I mean, their names are public. They got the, all the protection what they need. Well, what? there's no law that allows them to do it. What law in Western Australia or Australia allows them to do this? They claim that they're enforcing the political law being in my home mm -hmm. to charge me over a Nazi government metal clamp that I cut off my car. So what? Get over it. You're trying to extort money out of me and you're using that money for wickedness, like the Bible says. And then you say, you, you claim you're enforcing the political made law, yet there's no law that allows you to black out this name in WA or Australia. And furthermore, you could be lying about this. Like he lied about your name, I said. He lied about his name. And you could be but claiming no one, that you yeah. got permission from a judge or a magistrate or a JP to come to my home with seven officers. But that could be a complete lie as well. Because mm. how can I verify that when there's no name?
That's a good question, and that, Teresa. For every Australian, the same thing to go into your home and do. That's like Nazism. I'm sorry. This is totally... They stole my intellectual property, two laptops, an external hard drive, my video camera. I was and they done it all against a woman. Against a woman. I had this thing in my hand and a video camera in my hand. They threw me to the floor, face yes. first. They got my left arm yanked it up like this until I was crying, hurting me, and there's seven of them. And then um, they cuffed me. My, they damaged my arm. I'm left-handed. I used to be a phys ed teacher. I'm fairly strong. And now, when I bend my arm like this, I've got pain through here. When I do the dishes, my arm is sore. It'll never be the same again. Yes. And then searched my home. Then they took me to the station. They fingerprinted me. They took my DNA. They interviewed yes. me. They took my phone. All the usual stuff. I yes. did not consent. There's a form on there, and it says whether you consent or not consent. And I said I did not consent to what you're doing because this. I've got no rights here. No lawyer. I rang a lawyer. I yeah. rang a legal aid lawyer. They wouldn't even come to the station. Mm -hmm. And um, then he, the police officers lied about that too. The lawyer told me they have to give you a summons or a bail undertaking. Yes. Uh, those are the options. They didn't give me those options, just a bail undertaking. Let, let's go in order. So they let you go home <laughs> on a ba go. bail condition. Yeah. Then they obviously filed the charges at the court. Yeah. And the court sent you a letter to appear. No, no I didn't get anything from the court. But you got... An invite for the hearing to go. No, I didn't from the court. No, I so got who do you got the, the invite from? Well, the police have it in their record. It's the paperwork is shocking. It's so shoddy, and it's not. Um, so you got the yeah, knowledge. You, there, you, you see, got the, they yeah. give you a date and a time. So you know. Force you to sign this to go home. I see. You can't okay. make any statement or anything. Okay, so you got the information on the 17th is going to be here. And then I wrote a three-page submission um, with the Magistrates Court. They know who I am down there. I, I filed it. They know I'm a teacher. I wrote all that in my submission. So and then your I didn't case. show up. Now they want to jail me. Now the police uh, I came to my home one... Um, they came once and I wasn't home. I'm living like a fugitive, staying at people's houses. Yep. I'm looking at seeking political protection from another country because of this. Because if I'm at home and they catch me, they'll jail me for this. For, for what? For not showing up to the hearing. And you're not showed up on the 17th. Why don't you go down to the court on the 17th? If I show up, the people who assaulted me are there trying to drag me into the court. I don't trust the magistrate, big magistrates in the Fremantle Magistrate Court. I don't trust the magistrates and the judges in this country anymore because the political signage thing I had to go through before. Yeah. That so, magistrate's court tried to fine me for that. They sided with the government as well, the court, the council, over political signage. I had to go to the Supreme Court for that. I had a bit of a win. Yeah. What am I going to go through this whole thing again, go to the Supreme Court, spend thousands of dollars of my own money and time, just fighting for my basic rights. If I go to that court in Fremantle, I'm in their clutches. You know, the police are there. They, if the judge decides to be nasty and not listen to anything I say or yes. uphold the human rights legislation or any of the legislation that I've identified, yes. like I said, they choose what legislation they want to enforce. Yes. yes. And then that's it. I'm in their clutches. No, Miss Van Lee you're going to so, be locked up. So, Teresa. I'm not risking that. But if you're not going to the court, no. you're going to be locked up anyway. If they're catching well, I'm you. I'm a smart lady. I'm, I'm, I've made plans. Yeah, I'm, that's I'm, good. So it was the I'm next step. I'm not step. going to go to jail for my political and economic views. I have to look at living in another country and coming back to contest political elections. That's what it's come to for me, mm. you know. And, and they've driven a great teacher who was born here, I was born in this nation, out of this country because of their political and judicial corruption. Teresa, thanks very much for coming into the studio. Thank you, Tibor. It was nice talking to you again. It's good to see you again, John. Don't forget, next week, same time, same channel. One-on-one -on -one shadow boxing.